everyone, and welcome back to the Web3 Native Podcasts, and specifically to our multi-chain series. Today, we have none other than Ethan Buckman, who is the co-founder of Cosmos, CEO of Informal System, uh, and many hats, so also president of the Interchain Foundation. And I know very deep thinker about you know distributed states, like localized finance, uh, and a huge fan of like the whole Web3 ecosystem uh, as a whole. So thank you so much for joining us, Ethan. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. All right. We are actually recording this episode at a very special time in, I guess, Web3 history as a whole, right? The date is actually 15th of November here in Singapore. I know possibly one day earlier uh, where Ethan is. And we are seeing one of the most turbulent times where, you know, FTX has just you know, collapsed. Uh, and also in, within Cosmos, we have just seen the hugely anticipated proposal, uh, Prop 82, which is the signaling proposal for Adam 2.0, get rejected with a, a huge kind of no with veto block. So <laughs> a, a very kind of timely recording. Uh, and, and while we will we'll probably not comment, maybe a quick comment on the overall kind of ecosystem and, and any current thoughts right now. Yeah, I mean the you know the FTX thing is extremely troubling and 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 concerning, of course, and um, you know it's terrible whenever whenever there's a there's a large crisis and a lot of people lose money, but especially the level of legitimacy they seemed to have from people and and the fawning that you know people did over over Sam and um, it's kind of disgusting. I mean, it sort of makes me angry to, to I get riled up when I kind of talk about it, so maybe we shouldn't uh, I shouldn't go yeah, on a rant. Let's not dwell on it. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I mean, you know the the it proves more and more time and time again, like how important the protocols and technology we're building are, because this was a failure of the same kinds of, you know, centralized autocratic institutions that um, we're, we're, we're trying to build better than and we're trying to replace ultimately. And, uh, you know, the fact that the, that the regulations were so like in Sam's favor and, you know, the access he had as a lobbyist and, and two regulators, like compared to what we've been able to do with DeFi, what these protocols have been able to do and the level of transparency and ultimately soundness in, you know, core DeFi protocols compared to the repeated failures mm -hmm. of these centralized actors is, um, is incredible. So it's a, it's a testament to, to what we've been able to build and, um, you know, an indictment of of the the systems, the legacy institutions that, that come before us, and a call for 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 people to not take it for granted. I mean, the you know, a lot of people in our in our community that um you know that that supported them or that didn't do sufficient due diligence or you know just sort of ran with it because that's where all the money was there, right? Like, um, hmm. you know, I think we need to be a lot more, <laughs> a lot more, a lot more careful and um, a lot less just after the hype. I mean, that's at the end of the day, you know. Yep. So anyway, it's uh, I don't think we've seen all the fallout from this yet. So it's probably going to take some time and we still don't know what happened. Sam's tweeting what one one letter every few what? hours or something. I don't know. What he's <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah but uh, in, in comparison, we've got, yeah, Prop 82. I mean, it's uh, so this was the Cosmos proposal that, that we've been working on for a while that got vetoed today. Uh, another kind of just amazing indication of the level of, um, you know, decentralization and, and, and transparency we can get with these mm. systems, see the whole vote, you know, live on chain progressing and to have a, you know, verifiable, untamperable result mm. and, and, and to be in a situation where a bunch of core devs get together and make a proposal that's just smacked down by members of the community <laughs> after extremely vigorous and passionate debate, you know, it's... Um, it's really something to experience. So uh, yeah, it's a crazy time. But, uh, yeah, I, I can't imagine how it must feel, right? Because I know so much effort has been put into creating this proposal yeah. and like so many contributors have chipped in and there was yeah. a strong uh, like kind of sense of, I guess, responsibility and momentum uh, to actually bring value to the hub. Right. And, yeah. and so like for the, the Adam uh, stakers and the Adam community to, to shut it down almost feels like, you know, are, are you, are you negating, like, are you not recognizing this effort and this spirit of like wanting to do the best yeah. by the Adam community. Right. So yeah. A any thoughts on like, you know, how do you feel right now? Yeah. I, I, I don't take it like that. I mean, it, um, you know, this was a signaling proposal, right. Yep. And so whether it, whether it passed or failed, um, you know, the day it passed or failed, nothing was going to happen, right? It was yep. just, it's just text. It's just a, it's just a new signal in the chain, basically. And, and, and what the, what the proposal achieved was, um, 
you know, a sort of resurgence of interest and engagement in the governance process, you know, renewed conversation about, about the risks of what's coming, about how we're going to do governance, about how we're going to fund things, um, and, and, and how we're going to evolve the hub. And in, in some sense, you know, it, 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 it achieved that purpose. Yep. Um, and, and many of the things that were proposed, you know, may, may still move forward. Interchange security, you know, is, yep. is, um, is ready to launch in, in, in January. Liquid staking is something that's happening. It's just like whether or not the core development team build it, it's going to exist. So something needs to be built to, you know, to deal with it. And so that conversation is ongoing and, mm. um, you know, and then, and people are discussing ways to actually still in, increase the funding to the community pool and, and, and so on. So, you know, I, I wrote a tweet thread earlier today and, you know, we were on the, we were on the live stream earlier as well. Um, and in talking about, you know, given where the conversation was at over the last, you know, certainly over the last week at the, you know, the final, uh, the final outcome, right. It swung what a couple of days yesterday or two days ago it went, mm -hmm. uh, you know, no veto got the upper hand and then, uh, finally rejected. So, you know, by the end of it, even if it technically passed, you know, even if it, even if the outcome was a yes, after, after all of this, um, you know, the result kind of still would have, would have been the same. We're still going to have to make amendments. We're still going to have to make changes. Like there was obviously various, a very vigorous, um, opposition to some of, to some of what was proposed, the level of funding and, 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 and so on. And perhaps rightly so, uh, you know, these, the, these things maybe can and, 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 and should move slower and, uh, you know, have more accountability and in the, in, you know, details and in, in the process, we wrote the proposal. We felt, you know, this is a signaling proposal. There's a lot more detail still to come. Every aspect of the paper is still yep. going to have to get voted on in future proposals. And, yep. you know, there's, there's plenty of detail to fill in. And so, you know, if you roughly believe in this, in this overall direction that, you know, that, that we're going to launch interchange security, that's going to open up a new ability to build uh, around the cosmos hub that, you know, liquid staking is, is coming and we have to sort of handle that and, and, and build for that. Um, that uh, that we have the opportunity now to build what we call a growth engine, right? With with uh, different interchain secured uh, applications that uh, help grow the ecosystem. We call that the allocator. That service the ecosystem. We call that the scheduler. Uh, and that we're going to need, you know, uh, better or additional funding for this, and 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 better, more sophisticated governance. That was the you know the overall thrust of the paper. Um, you know, then then what was in there was was sort of sufficient right but uh, and i think a lot of people still generally agree with that direction but you know they didn't like the you know some of the details and, and the level of inflation and, and and so on it's like okay so we'll still move forward with the general vision but uh, you know the the need to be new proposals smaller scoped um to to sort of do things more iteratively so uh in yep. that sense you know i think it's, it's still it's still a positive outcome you know we're still building we're still we're still going to make this thing happen um it was uh it was an amazing signal <laughs> it was uh it was interesting but yeah i don't know yeah, for sure. Uh, and, and thanks for recapping a lot already most of the major components. Uh, yeah. If I may do, to summarize, so to help the audience, if there's a lot of Adam 2.0 content already out there, definitely check out yeah. the white paper, check out the forums, and a lot of threads have been written about it. Uh, if yeah. I mean conceptually kind of like group them together, I think the and, and uh, do uh, respond as well. I'd love to hear like which parts you think were more controversial or you thought like had the most learning. Uh, the way I see it is like there's tech component, there's economic component, there's a governance component as well. And mm. the tech component to me sounds like it's the least controversial, right? We have mm. like interchange security to like extend functionality, like help people who don't uh, who don't want to run validators or don't know how to, to then like start off with the, the hub to as the security uh, uh, functionality. And then we have uh, liquid staking, as you said, to uh, help then like these stake assets move around the Cosmos ecosystem. We have the allocator, which can kind of form trade agreements between chains. Uh, and also the scheduler uh, would actually kind of like nationalize MEV as a business or allow deal making of block space um, that is coordinated by the hub. And all these will generate new functionalities and new cash flow opportunities uh, for the the cosmos hub and so far from what i've seen these have been really not uh, uncontroversial and i guess if anything will be like oh let's just check that the security is fine you know that there are no other implications and let's uh, flesh out the details of how it can be implemented uh and yeah. but generally it's okay um but yeah. the parts that have been receiving a lot more attention than the economic part obviously around like new issuance of Adam and how that will be managed, you know, like multi-sig leadership, so on. Uh, and like the governance part, uh, actually have, I've seen like the, the new charter being issued and with like councils and committees, uh, should that like it, uh, tie in with this whole like economic part as well. Uh, I think a lot more conversation and, and room, uh, to flesh out, uh, are almost in these other two components. 
Yeah, yeah, that's right. That was a really good. Uh, that was a really great recap. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, that's uh, that. That's basically it. Yeah. So I mean, I think largely the tech was generally uncontroversial. I mean, interchain security is the sort of most you know longest awaited thing that um, for the first time is really going to allow the hub to expand to actually have a development environment to offer um, an environment where developers can show up and build applications secured by. Uh, by by the staked atom and they're sort of part of um, you know more integrated part of the part of the ecosystem of of the cosmos hub liquid staking i mean uh, th there was um there was increased discussion around um the risks of liquid staking and what to do about mitigations and, and certainly there are a lot of risks and um you know we we we, we do need more analysis and monitoring and, and 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 so on and sort of need to be careful with uh how liquid staking is, is is rolled out and all this i mean the thing with liquid staking is it's happening already it happens on centralized exchanges there's sort of there's a level at which you can't stop it. You can sort of play, you know, you can play cat and mouse games. You can build mitigations in. You can you can build up reserves, and and, and all those things are good. And and so I think there were some ideas generated uh, for how to do some of that risk mitigation. Um, the allocator and the um and and the scheduler, like like you described, would be consumer chains that would sort of help you know grow the ecosystem and 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 service it. And they open up, you know, that opens up a lot of opportunities for sort of R and D in the M and D space. Uh, sorry, the MEV space and. Um, and in uh, you know sort of DeFi mechanisms and, and and how you build incentive alignment between chains and new kinds of IBC protocols for uh, for distributing assets and things like that. So um, so 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 that's all really cool technical stuff. And then yeah, and then the economics, um, the issuance was it was certainly the most uh, the most controversial. Um, and you know it was a, it was a kind of well there was a few things. One was the acknowledgement that um, you know the recognition that the the current issuance rate could come down because right now. Right now, issuance is exponential, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so there's like a, a percentage of the total assets are, are issued, or of the total atoms are issued every year and distributed to um, to the staked atoms, right? Um, and and that and that that um, the amount that's issued, the basically the inflation rate adjusts based on how much is staked, right? And so if it's mm -hmm. above two thirds, then the inflation decreases to some minimum, currently seven percent. And if the amount staked is below two thirds, it, it increases up to um, some maximum currently set at at, at twenty percent. And you know what, what the paper sort of talks about is with the new you know with new sources of revenue to pay for security coming from interchain security and coming from uh, uh, the scheduler and returns from the allocator and, th and things like this, you can actually um, and, and and also because of liquid staking, uh, which will will incentivize much more stake to be directly staked on on, on the Cosmos Hub, you could start to um, reduce the overall issuance rate, but and 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 you know even propose making it linear at some point um, and, and moving away from exponential um, and then in addition to that we you know we proposed um, uh, issuing some number of atoms into the community pool and then at a future date into the new treasury which was the governance mechanism uh, which is you know about basically building more sophisticated sort of governance functions different groups um, to gov to basically be allocated budgets by uh, the atom holders on an annual basis to manage those budgets and to you know sort of build up a more um more kind of organizational structure to actually fund and develop um uh the software into the future so uh, that, that was sort of the the collection of ideas i think a lot of the the controversy yeah was on the on the amount of issuance and you know how issuance would reduce to stakers and when and uh, how governance of the treasury is going to work and more details about all that and you know it just felt like uh i think overall the sentiment was just too much too fast and like okay guys like great ideas let's uh Let's slow this bad boy down, and and that's fine. That's good. Um, I think it's I think it's fun. <laughs> to, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, yes, it, fun, fun is right, right? Like, it certainly energized the whole community and like rallied everybody and yeah. brought out a lot of discussions. Surfaced a lot of these like uh, discussions, uh, yeah. be it around like uh, politically or technologically, economically. So, uh, definitely a great step forward for the Cosmos ecosystem. And in a way, this has always been the history of Cosmos, right? Like a lot of like competing ideas and factions and people building stuff in parallel like right now mesh security yeah. has already been uh built as an mvp right so that's going to interplay with with uh the chain security as well uh and as you have mentioned multiple times in cosmos like we want many different hubs right it's, it's a plural mm -hmm. uh, kind of ecosystem yeah uh, that's right yeah it's a bottom-up emergent topology right i mean that this was the thing that cosmos did different from basically every other ecosystem was you know we weren't going to build top down a single a single blockchain or a single token that was uh, supposed to be at the root of it all it was very much a bottom-up thing you know we sovereignty was the the sort of core core thesis sovereignty interoperability anyone can build their own application specific chain with their own community their own political economy and you know freely decide who they want to who they want to interact with right 
um, mm. and, and and the first blockchain that sort of prototyped all this and proved that this was all possible and, and sort of funded it and brought the community together, that was the Cosmos Hub. And it kind of completed its it completed its initial purpose, you know, the, the what I call the first phase of Cosmos, the initiation phase. And now we're moving into this, um, what I call the integration phase. And, and so upgrading the role of the Cosmos Hub is sort of part of that, but it's still, its purpose is still to grow and service the the much wider uh, interchain economy and, and, and even to support uh, the growth and emergence of, of new hubs to, you know, to interact with it, to compete with it, to collaborate with it, uh, yeah. and, and, and so on. So, you know, this is still just, just the beginning of that, of that integration phase. And, you know, maybe once, once we're through it, we'll emerge into our, uh, illumination phase where, uh, you know, we'll really, this, uh, this technology will, will really hit the real world and, and we'll, we'll really be, um, be moving on our longer term goals of upgrading sort of, you know, real world political economy and so on. But, I think we still have a ways to go to get there and uh yeah <laughs> yeah certainly quite a few steps quite a few steps uh -huh. <laughs> yeah uh, i think some of our comrades need to stop uh, blowing up their their exchanges first and then you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah um if, if i may introduce a, a concept here or, or analogy that really came to mind when i saw a lot of the discussion uh is actually we see quite a lot, a, a good divide between people who want to bring the space forward and a kind of a force for conservatism, right? And this is uh, universal in all the kind of political discourse, right? Should we kind of stay as we are and like move slower, learn from history, or should we kind of forge ahead and have new possibilities, right? Bring in new people. And in a way, I almost see that playing out with Adam 2.0, right? Yeah. Where one thing is like for example the uh, and in a way it kind of reminds me of like this is bitcoin like mentality where like hey you know monetary uh, issuance is like the most important thing and all the other stuff like almost doesn't matter or is optional mm -hmm. right and uh and in a way i think many of the uh, longer term like uh, adam uh, or, or cosmos community people are very much like bitcoin fans as well mm -hmm. uh and it's in, a, in an ironic way right so Cosmos Hub is definitely the longest uh, running kind of uh, app chain uh, in the Cosmos ecosystem. And so yeah. you, you'd want to minimize kind of the tweaks, which is why you, you want the new functionalities to be consumer chains, right, uh, around the Cosmos Hub. Uh, and then those who can generate cash flow for the hub with various, uh, in through various ways. Um, and so the hub itself is not meant to change much. Uh, right. And in a way, but it, it, in a funny way, because Bitcoin is deflationary by default, or like issuance kind of tapers off, uh, the Cosmos Hub, the issuance actually goes exponential, as you said. So it is, yeah, it's exponentially infinite. Yeah, <laughs> at least currently. Uh, yeah. it, it, it strikes me as really ironic how the most conservative wow. people of Cosmos, who are big fans of Bitcoin, don't get that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean no, I, I, it's a that's a really good point. I mean, I think I think people get. It. I mean, there's a lot. Look. I, I, I do love the analogy between the Cosmos Hub and, and, and Bitcoin and from the perspective of it being, you know, a more sort of slow, stable anchor, um, you know, within this kind of thrashing sea of innovation. There's something kind of more trusted, more secure, really focused on conservatism and, and, and security. And, you know, interchain security is a way to sort of evolve the and expand the, the development ecosystem around the Cosmos Hub without kind of compromising the core and sort of sticking to those um to those principles um but at, but at the same time the the cosmos hub has done some you know very uh let's say non-bitcoin style style things i mean uh for one there was a there was a fundraiser early on there was a, a vote early on in, in the lifetime of the cosmos hub to change some of the balances to support people that you know lost their keys in the fundraiser and uh, there's on-chain voting in the first place, you know, and 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 we upgrade the thing with votes, and we change parameters on chain, and it's 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 proof of stake, it's stake based, right? And and then it's inflationary, um, in uh, in, in in an exponential sense. Um, so there's uh, there's from Bitcoin and sort of offer this promise of it being a little bit and evolving and, and you know, maybe what was proposed in the in, in, in the paper, at least as far as the issuance. I mean, again, everyone, you know, everyone seems generally supportive of, of interchain security. And um, I mean, uh, uh, you know, again, the liquid staking is, is like happening, but we can build all the things um, on top of interchain security it really comes down to, I think, the uh, the 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 level and amount of issuance. And, and you know, it's not clear that the it's, it's, it's not clear that the Cosmos Hub will never issue new tokens. I think it's still it's still possible. Um, mm -hmm. You know, maybe maybe it shouldn't be. I mean, maybe people would prefer like that's not even um, a possibility. I mean, I, th I think it's naive to not think about it. I mean, it's always it's always a possibility. Um, mm -hmm. 
you know, these are these are political institutions. I mean, it's even possible that Bitcoin is going to have to is going to have to break the 21 million limit. Right. I mean, I you know, it's possible for, for Bitcoin to survive. It's going to have to keep issuing issuing block rewards so it doesn't destabilize itself. Right. So, mm. I mean, <laughs> so we'll see. Um, these things are going to need to need to need to evolve. And I'm still confident that that to the extent the Cosmos Hub needs to evolve it will be able to right mm. and, and 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 so the signal was okay guys like let's slow down here we can evolve but we're going to evolve a little bit more slowly and and maybe it's not as urgent that you know we we approve some massive change like today but you know yeah. let, let's take the time and, and and figure that thing out and and, and honestly I'm, I'm very supportive of that i think that's oh, yeah. um you know that's that's good so um, yeah yeah and that's so, it's certainly a good positive yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and the, the other thing, if I may, that I, I thought was surface as a sentiment is also relating back, back to this kind of like a Bitcoin like or like old and conservative mindset is that a lot of the changes, if it's driven by technology or like uh, as an immutable protocol where like we can always see, OK, you know, in 100 years, this is what issuance is going to be like, then it can mm -hmm. be quite clear. Right. Uh, yeah. Or even even in the current uh, form of cosmos emission, like it's very clear, okay, like sticking above this amount, below this amount, this is going to be like the emissions. Yeah. Uh, whereas it seems that the new emissions, while there is a, a predictable amount that we are requesting to be uh, kind of allocated to a certain treasury, um, the way this treasury is going to be governed seems to be more people driven. And, and I find that uh, some of the, the criticism is around that, right? Uh, yeah. And similar with like the adoption of like ICS and, and some other things, it seems to be also people driven. It's almost like business development driven that we have been doing, mm -hmm. trying to court like USDC to come and be a consumer chain, trying to court some of the larger projects uh, to come and use in the chain security. And and I, if I may summarize that as a sentiment, right? Like uh, being more like sensitive or allergic to kind of like the uh the capture of like power or political power mm -hmm. in in the hands of certain like multi-sig treasury that can move mm -hmm. uh whatever funds in terms of adam uh sensitive to like who represents the hub to then like do business development uh for for the chain security uh it almost seems that the, the community wants to reject that uh and even if it's at the expense of like a sound a, a sounder kind of like monetary uh policy uh, as a whole yeah. so yeah, what do you think about this? Because uh, as as one of the core contributors, co-founders, like clearly you guys, and you have been at the center of like driving a lot of uh, that kind of like branding and business development and like governance mm -hmm. itself, right? Um, perhaps like it is if, if the company doesn't want it, are they gonna step up and you know like take the responsibility to do it, or how do you see this moving forward? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I mean, I think there's there's a lot of things to unpack there. I mean, again, one I would reiterate just because the proposal was was knocked down doesn't necessarily mean you know the community doesn't want some of that but you know yeah. certainly the way it was outlined in, in in the proposal or 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 at the speed i think it's it's um you know there's an irony that like uh you know people talk about like oh we, we shouldn't have humans involved and you know that's a kind of risk of decision making and stuff i mean gosh, yeah. the, the, the humans are in the humans are in the loop i mean who do you think is building the stuff who do you think is like <laughs> deploying it who do you think is running it like there are human beings in the in the mode here and if you don't represent them in your i mean the whole point of cosmos is you know about representing stakeholders within the state machine right mm. um and, and and proof of stake is a step towards doing that you know representing the 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 token holders but there's a lot more stakeholders within the system to to represent within within the state machine and and it's increasingly important i think that we find ways to effectively represent them because they have power off chain Right. And 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 so what are you doing? You're just leaving that power off, off, off chain in, in sort of, you know, more more opaque, e even less accountable ways. And, you know, what, what we're trying to talk about is how do we bring representation and accountability of that power directly on chain and integrate it, you know, in sort of sort of more formal ways with with the power of the, um, you know, of the of the of the coin holder, the staked coin holders, essentially. Right. Um, and so, you know, that's what that's what we're that's what we're ultimately working towards. The hub being able to take more responsibility for directly funding uh, and resourcing it, its own its own development with more granularity and more control. Because right now, trying to do everything through a single full atom holder vote, um, you know, uh, e each time just into a multi second without really like improving any of the tooling for that or any of the the accountability loops or, or any of this stuff, uh, you know, that's going to limit what kinds of organizations can be built up to support. Uh, to, to support the Cosmos Hub. I mean, you know, I, I think people kind of have a naive sense of, you know, just do everything on like a short term three month contract. And it's like, I'm sorry, but you don't build long term, uh, you know, sustainable institutions on 
on, on three month contracts. Right. I mean, that's, um, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that, that's how you get, that's how you build fragility and stuff. Right. And, and, and so we need to figure out, we need to figure out how to strike the balance. And the reality right now is there's, there are a number of, of entities working on, on the Cosmos hub, um, off chain and they're funded off chain and, and, and they're funded by, you know, existing resources from the ICF and, you know, a little bit from the, from the community pool. Uh, but, but primarily right now is, uh, things are funded by, by the ICF and, you know, some other sources we're, we're trying to, um, trying to build that up. But, you know, the a big part of the goal of one of the big goals of the paper was to propose that, Hey, the hub should be able to take more responsibility for building the organizational structure and kind of integrating it. That that's going to support it, um, for the long term. And, and, and I think we still need, we still need to do that. And, you know, what was interesting about, about the treasury was it was trying to strike the balance between the power of, of the, uh, of the stakers and, um, and allow Allowing them to sort of delegate, uh, delegate in a more sophisticated way, the uh, management of annual budgets, essentially, right? That they could that they could vote on, you know, a, a pass sort of an amount, and there could be proposals, and 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 we could do things in a little bit more kind of sophisticated, long term way, and you could you could build up, you know. Um, uh, a sort of reputation uh, on the council. You can create different councils and you know charge them with different responsibilities and, and kind of have things more uh, be more continuous and, and actually build up some more structure. So you know I would still hope that we'll be able to do to move towards that kind of thing. I think if we're just stuck in a pure you know pure coin holder based voting with no other additional um, uh, kind of sophistication, then you know that's that's not great. I mean maybe maybe the way this will happen is that it'll start to play out on on consumer chains and you know that's really where we're, where we'll start experimenting with um you know with additional forms of of, of governance and, and and funding and as things are proven out you know they might get backported up to the hub or something like that. I think that would be you know that that could be a good model for how for how systems evolve and and how the hub um you know might adopt features down the way or or you know the, the hub could even just send uh you know some amount of funds that some atoms or, or or whatnot to one of these consumer chains and actually start using uh, you know, using using systems deployed there to do, um, you know, start trying to fund development and, and, and other sorts of things. So um, there's still a lot of potential to do this stuff and, and, and to still move forward with it. And, you know, we still believe um, that, uh, that that it needs to happen. But, you know, I think the idea that, oh, it should just be, you know, coin holder voting and that's kind of the only form of of on chain representation and, and, and governance, you know, that obviously has significant limits. And, and I think we need to move beyond that. You know, I've talked about in the past. Um, hmm. That I see kind of kind of governance and what we're doing here. I reference this, you know, stakeholders in the state machine, um, you know, kind of kind of idea. And I have a talk on this. You can look up. It's called stakeholders and and state machines. Um, you know, where I talk about this problem of of building sustainable systems requires actually representing within the system the structure of your environment so that you're able to respond to it. Right. You have to you have to understand the powers that be, so to speak, uh, so that you can orient yourself uh, uh, with, uh, with with respect to them. And you know, so I, I propose this idea that we're sort of stepping from you know more and more global uh, uh, global. Um, uh, low resolution systems like Bitcoin towards higher and higher resolution systems. And, and you know, Cosmos and or the Cosmos Hub and, and Proof of Stake is sort of uh, seems like a, a kind of transitional phase to helping us do that. Right. Um, and and you know, exactly what comes next isn't isn't entirely clear, but it'll, but it'll relate more to kind of real world processes and real world identities and, you know, the provision of bandwidth and other kinds of core infrastructure and and other things, you know, ultimately towards um, you know, care work and, and and supporting like local communities and, and the work that keeps human civilizations alive, right? And and if we just stay at this abstract level of like pure anarcho-capitalist, globalist, Bitcoiner, like store of value is all that matters, <laughs> then, you know, then we're, then we're never going to get anywhere. And so, hmm. um, you know, and, I, and, and, and honestly, I think the Cosmos community, I think the Cosmos Hub community does does understand that. Uh, mm. But you know, we, uh, we 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 sort of need to need to keep building the trajectory and and the roadmaps to actually um, to actually work towards all that. So yeah, Make, makes sense. And, and I love that you drew that as kind of like a spectrum and a journey that yeah. will move towards like more of that that localized and and like high resolution, as you said. Uh, yeah. If I'm, we, we will definitely go there uh, in a bit. I think for now, if I may zoom in on a particular topic, like in this transition, kind of like next step towards higher resolution, right? Uh, of mm -hmm. course, in Adam 2.0, there, there's a whole uh, proposal on like how the new governance structure will be like, right? Uh, from like the whole coin voter base, we start to have like committees and councils uh, that will make some of these higher resolution uh, decisions and then that flows into like proposals uh, that those people can then ratify and implement. Um, but at the very base, Right, it is still very much a, a coin voting thing, right? Like mm -hmm. to to then decide on like the overall uh, like right. charter and and the initial committees, uh, it is still a coin voter thing, and and coin voters can still de a veto uh, at mm -hmm. at the at the worst case scenario. So, uh, how does this play out? Because um, if 
if we do just rely on home voting at the base, right, we still end falling back to a kind of a plutocracy kind of a mechanism. Yeah. Uh, and we're still open to to capture by, say, validators where a lot of people are, are delegating to them and because maybe they don't know any better or maybe they didn't do the research themselves. So um, are you also thinking of like enriching this with like more forms of uh, yeah. like reputation and other mechanisms? Yeah, I'm, I mean, we think about it. I mean, um, you know, I have this idea that one day the validators of the Cosmos Hub will be other blockchains themselves. And, uh, and Cosmos Hub will be like a version of Tendermint running over IBC, right? And uh, so you'll be like sending votes over IBC to vote on blocks proposed by other blockchains, uh, which is sort of a, a crazy meta idea. Um, but, you know, how they, and it, it's sort of the idea, you know, is the idea of it like moving towards more of a co-op structure and being actually a cooperative of, of chains rather than just like pure kind of shareholder based kind of model, which, which, which is more like how it is now with, with stakers. I mean, it has delegation and, 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 and all that stuff. Um, exactly what that would look like and what the voting power would be of, of the different blockchains. I mean, in cooperatives, it's, it's uh, you know, often your um, your stake or your returns, like the returns you get, you know, are, are based on, it's like based on how much you work for the co-op or what your salary is or how much you use its services or or something like that, right? It's called a, a, a patronage dividend, right? So, I mean, it could be something similar that, you know, based on how much IBC traffic you do or or something, um, you know, there's, there's probably a lot, of, a lot of details to work out on that. So I'm just dreaming a little bit, but more, more in the shorter term, I mean, you know, I think we need to, we need to be thinking about um, a little bit more about the composition of, of the validator set and, and, and the different interests there right now, especially on the Cosmos Hub. But, you know, it's heavily dominated by centralized exchanges who mm. don't, you know, vote. I mean, they do their upgrades, you know, kind of reasonably. I mean, uh, <laughs> they're, they're, they're not as good as some of the smaller validators who are usually pretty quick and just like awesome and right there, you know. But um, so, 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 the, so they can kind of slow things down and they don't participate in governance and they're all afraid to because of, you know, regulation or, or, or whatever. Um, and, you know, they are, many of them are offering liquid staking and, 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 you know, they're posing a kind of risk to the system. And, and I think it's worth thinking about, you know, setting some kind of cap on them and, um, you know, and, and, and maybe uh, maybe removing them from the kind of governance system if they're choosing not to vote anyway and, 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 and things like that. And, and there could be better ways to represent, um, you know, the power of, uh, of, of developers, for instance, or, uh, you know, we talk at least about... Um, about ways to introduce like circuit breakers from a security perspective, right? And so, you know, the developers are really always looking out for, um, at, at least at some level, you have to be able to trust them that they're looking out for the best interest of the thing. Otherwise, you're not going to have a healthy security process. If you don't have a healthy security process, then, mm. you know, then, uh, then, then you're not going to make it ultimately, right? Um, and so, you know, there are there are certain ideas to better represent, you know, the, the real kind of power structures that, that are out there. Mm. Uh, but I think it could be a lot more active uh more actively discussing this and 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 you know how we how we're managed how we're going to manage centralization risk in the validator set how we're going to improve decentralization in the validator set and and ultimately you know uh, maybe some of that involves moving away from just pure linear kind of coin holder voting um and, and and to have other kinds of mitigations involved but but it does require kind of more active um more active governance right at, at, at the end of the day so mm -hmm. um yeah so we, we definitely we definitely saw a very active governance um you know, this week, I think we still had some folks mm -hmm. that, that, that vote some of the, you know, big exchanges still, um, still not really voting, but it looks like, you know, other people that don't usually vote kind of showed up and it was kind of awesome to see that. And, um, yeah, it was really, really, really good turnout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, th thanks for bringing it up. I, I love the kind of the new ideas that are bubbling up, right? Like you said, uh, yeah. some form of like, uh, showing your contribution with IBC, uh, perhaps some of the yeah. app chains have like, you know, more weightage there, the core contributors, uh, of like the hub itself, and maybe even yeah. some form of like, uh, you know, proof of humanity, democracy. I don't know whether that is, is in the works, right? So, uh, that actually are verified users or uh, of uh, Cosmos and, and that yeah. Cosmos Hub as well. You know, Confio, the, the, the team at Confio has been working on this uh, proof of engagement system mm. um, uh, for quite some time. I don't know exactly how that how that's going, but it's de there's definitely, um, you know, there's definitely some interesting design there to try to evaluate, you know, the level of like contribution and engagement of, um, you know, different contributors and, and, and to assign, you know, some level of voting power based on that. So I think things like that are definitely, definitely interesting and, and, and worth exploring um, more seriously as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, and of course, in the end, as you mentioned, longer term vision, like other blockchains and so on. And and so that yeah. will really uh, form a strong, I guess, like anti-colluding factor because everybody has like their own interests and their own perspective and their own 
communities and history. And, yeah. and to me, I think that really embodies, I think the, the culture of Cosmos. And I, I always come back to this word, like plurality of like mm-hmm. one, which, which uh, is the you know, forms resilience, like anti-fragility, right. Through like the, the kind of like collusion resistance. So yes, uh, I'd love to, to understand your view. I think from Prop 82, we've seen some very diverse groups come up in particular, there seems to be a certain voting block of like the, the, uh, Asian Eastern slash like Korean kind of communities. Uh, I think we've seen like Dokia Cosmos station, uh, vote in a very particular way and bring a certain group with them. Uh, how do you think this, this plays out, right? As a voting block, right? Are you looking to then engage them, uh, and kind of yeah. convince them or should we like let them have their own opinions and then we'll try to drag them along the majority. It's kind of like how democracy is tri- tyranny of the majority, uh, at the same yeah. time balance that out with like the sovereign kind of concept of Cosmos where like, Hey, maybe yeah. they can have some mini pocket of innovation where they hey, go ahead and try it out in, in like your own way. Yeah. I mean, we should, we should definitely, you know, they should definitely have their own, have their own opinions and, uh, you know, and, and, and form strong ones and, um, and, and do what they believe in. And, and we should try to work together and build consensus. I mean, we, you know, we were talking about this earlier on the, on the live stream today, you know, there's some discussion around like, oh, there should be a fork. And, you know, I mean, anyone is free to, to fork the software and build a new community, but, but, you know, to try to, uh, to try to say, oh, there was some minority. And so we're going to, we're going to fork them out and continue the community and brand and everything we had without them. You know, I don't, I, I'm not sure that's, um, I don't think that's that's right or that's what we want to do right it's about that a lot of valid concerns were raised i mean these are these are incredibly valued members of of the community and 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 they said hey you know we this feels wrong to us and and we're gonna we're gonna state that it feels wrong and you know and 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 some of them even feel they're putting themselves at risk by doing so you know and so you know i uh i certainly commend that um that they're that 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 they're voting you know for for what they understand or, or or for how they think um and, and, and that's fine. So I don't hold, you know, um, ill will, uh, uh, per se at all. It's, uh, I think it's an opportunity for us to say, okay, let's, let's find some common ground. Like, let's work together. Let's talk about this. You know, let's, what does it take to, to, to take the next steps, um, together to kind of build this thing. So I, I, I think it's an opportunity more than anything to, um, you know, to, to try to work together. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how do we strike that balance? Right. Because to me, if, if I may relate this incident to like a broader tension, which is like, mm-hmm. I almost feel that plurality and like what, what you mentioned, like yeah. high resolution, localized uh, kind of representation are almost at odds with each other, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, on one hand, plurality means you want to bring them in and like be able to coexist, even though mm-hmm. you have differing opinions, but it necessarily means that there's some form of enforcement tyranny of the majority where like, hey, look, it, 60 of us, 60% of us voted yes and 30% no, it's going to pass, right? For example, yeah. uh, and even though you have different opinion, you have no choice. Uh, yeah. Whereas localized would mean would mean that they can then customize their environment uh, and like have their own set of economics, uh, even though they might share, say, some trade agreements, like financial mm-hmm. agreements, uh, with like the overall community. So uh, Cosmos sits at a at a very interesting kind of like dilemma here because we've always promoted this idea of plurality, app chains, sovereign, like you decide mm-hmm. how you want the comics and everything to be done. But when it comes to the hub, now it's like wait a second, we need like a shared consensus around what's going to happen. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's that that is true for every individual chain, right? That they need it. I mean, that's what they are. They're shared consensus yeah. on what's going to yeah. happen. That's literally that's literally what they are. Yeah. So of course, of course, we need that if they're if they're going to work at all. Um, and and, you know, the, you're right that the, the core sort of ethos is this, um, you know, is this kind of poly centrality or, or um, and, uh, you know, sovereignty, ultimately, that every, every community can kind of decide decide for themselves but within each community you know you need to decide are you are you a whole are you building a, a kind of collective culture here or or is there a need uh for for some kind of split and, and and ultimately at the end of the day folks can choose not to run the software they can choose to um you know to organize um to organize their own forks right and and, and to go off and, and branch off in, in, into new communities or they can decide you know to try to work together and, and to talk about it and you know i generally maybe i'm naive but i generally err on the side of you know we could we can talk about things and we can work things out on 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 many more levels than the rhetoric on the internet might suggest you know everyone seems to be you know on twitter you got to compress everything to you know 280 words or whatever and it looks like everyone hates each other and you know you get people together in person and you know they're hugging it out and they're finding all the common ground and stuff so you know i think there's a lot more 
there's a lot more common ground than uh, you know than our social media lets on, and and it's good to remember that um, from time to time while you're while you're in the thick of it. But you know, it, it does require continuous exploration and and discussion and, and conversation and active culture building, and 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 really is about the conversations we have with each other and, and the shared understanding we build and. You know, um, I mean, that's also what blockchains are. They, that's what kind of every computer program represents is a kind of, you know, understanding of something in the world, right, of, of a model of something. And, and even blockchains are, are, you know, very really uh, shared understandings of, of history and and logic for evolving into the future. Right. Um, and so, you know, that requires ongoing, ongoing conversations. There's a very human political element of that. And and that's OK. I mean, we need to we need to acknowledge it and recognize it and, and appreciate it and and culture it, uh, po you know, as, as best we can, I think so. Um, you know, it's not, it doesn't always feel that, that great and optimistic when you're in the thick of it and people are at each other's throats about, you know, about a bunch of text on a blockchain. I mean, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it gets a bit rough sometimes, but I think, you know, we gotta, we gotta keep our head up and, and be good to each other. And yeah, I think, I think we still have a, a bright future and, um, you know, right. this is, these are just learning experiences. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe I phrased it in, in too provocative a way saying that, you know, like they get dragged along by the majority. But as you said, there are still a lot of like shared uh, vibes and history mm -hmm. and, and yeah. common ground. And like maybe we disagree on this issue, uh, but it's, it's not enough for them to it not don't disagree enough on a fundamental level for them to like exit. Uh, although it's important to have the option to always exit yeah. and other exactly. hubs uh, or like your own chain itself. Yeah. yeah perfect. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Uh, and, and I think with, with that, I'd love to segue to then the idea of the uh, like more localized communities and Ko-Fi, which, which I know you're, you're a big uh, proponent of. So I uh, definitely want to have some space for that, right? I think, um, how, how do you see Ko-Fi kind of uh, playing out or, or do you see the early signs like as all these uh, incidents are happening uh, mm -hmm. with like governance and with, with other chains, um, is like, is the case for Ko-Fi being strengthened? Uh, as as we see the macro trends of like both within Web3 and the world. And I'd love to kind of like pick your brain on like, what are like all the data points that you see are like emerging uh, and all that fitting into like the longer term vision? Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, so, so Ko-Fi stands for collaborative finance. This is this is our take on on the right way to do, to approach finance and, 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 and to build something, you know, sustainable and, and, and correct. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of amazing stuff in, in, in DeFi, but uh, you know, we've seen it. Um, we've seen it deficient on, on a few fronts. I mean, there's uh, we can't. I certainly cannot commend enough the sort of blue chip, uh, you know, top uh, top DeFi applications. The the you know the Uniswaps and, and the Maker DAOs and and the you know rise of of the world and 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 so on. And just you know their ability to tolerate these unbelievable shocks and 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 all this. But they're still very much based around you know more. Um, uh, a more traditional, uh, even though, though they would hate that model of finance and, and of liquidity provision, and they're very much grounded in, in a world of um, of speculation and, and and focus on store of value as the sort of primary uh, you know primary function of of money, right? Um, and you know some of them are focusing more on, on on some of the medium exchange stuff as as well. But um, you know what what we what we're interested in is is figuring out how to really connect with the real world in a meaningful way and to bring this the technology you know the the sort of secure network technology of, of blockchains and and essentially the ability blockchains provide to make payments and to make secure payments and and to you know uh, uh, facilitate new kinds of financial applications bring that to the real world in a way that that really supports. Um, real world, you know, small, medium um, businesses, small, medium sized businesses, and 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 ultimately the real people uh, that run them. Because at the end of the day, that is the core heart of of an economy, right? It's it's the small and medium sized businesses that that that's where that's where growth, um, you know, like sustainable book growth can come from. That's where you know so much um, employment is is had. That's where you have sort of you know smaller, more responsible um, uh, uh, government where you where people more in tune with actually serving uh, you know a local community um, and so on. And they're hurting, and especially since two thousand eight. You know the with the global financial crisis they, they've been hurting that because there's been this like collapse in the availability of of liquidity in the economy right and 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 of course you know bitcoin and, and cryptocurrencies themselves emerged as a response to to what happened in 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 2008 and like oh there's something wrong with the money yeah i mean yeah there's something wrong with the money that that is for sure right um and and but in some sense you know the the whole cryptocurrency revolution doesn't really know what to do about that right and satoshi was like well we can do this digital cash thing so let's start there and have this like secure tamper proof store of value that you know no one's no one's going to touch but 
uh, that no one can really mess with. But that's not really that's not alone the future of money. I mean, that's a, that's a small piece of it. Bitcoin is important, very important, and I'm you know more of a more of a, a Bitcoin maxi than than I should probably admit. But <laughs> uh, despite you know all this all this commitment to proof of stake, I mean, I, I think uh, you know everyone knows Cosmos is, um, has a, a kind of Bitcoin roots in a sense, Ethereum roots as well. I mean, we're uh, you know we, we're very um, you know we love everyone, but. Um, you know, there's a lot more to fixing money than just a secure store of value, right? Because money is much more than than, than a store of value. You know, it's a unit of account and, and a medium of exchange as well. And and ultimately, you know, money is not a commodity. Money is a system of promise making, right? And going going back to talking about you know the, the sort of collaboration and trust and, and and governance and all this stuff. Money is a core part of all this. It's not just some commodity. It's not just lumps of gold you dig out of the ground and you know. And, and everyone agrees they're they're kind of the most valuable thing or something like that. Um, it's really about you know the webs of promise making, the webs of payment obligations that make that that make commerce go round, right? That that enables that, and that's the system that is that is also very deeply sick and and ill. It's not just because you know the dollar is not pegged to the gold standard. I mean the the system was broken long before 1971, right? I mean uh, if you want to understand where it broke, you know maybe somewhere in, in the 16th century, um, if 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 not sooner, but. Uh, and so what we're focusing on with with Kofi, with collaborative finance is actually getting trying to get to the source of 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 what's wrong and tapping into this problem of the payments graph itself right and um and and the need for money to support uh, essentially trade credit to support the sort of working capital and working conditions of small firms to be able to do business with each other to essentially be able to deliver goods um, you know, on on future payment, right? To to issue invoices that are due in the future. I mean, that's that is the heart. That is, that is the the engine of, of 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 commerce, and that's where you know you have real trusted relations in the real world, grounded in in, in sort of commercial activity and, and and commercial relationships. And so the idea of Kofi is to actually go out and and map the payments graph. Go look at the real payments graph that's out there, the real web of payments obligations, the network of invoices that exist in the real economy. And what's interesting is when when you actually look at the graph, when you when you look at the network, there are patterns in there and there are things you can do to just save everyone money. But in order to save everyone money, you have to actually look at the graph. And what do I mean by save everyone money? Well, well, if I owe you $10 and you owe Joe $10 and Joe owes me $10, right? Normally, none of us know about this. None of us know that there's a there's a closed loop of obligations. We only know about our, our sort of bilateral relations. But if, if we could see the graph, if we could see the network, we could find that there's a closed loop there and we can just clear ten dollars off of uh, off of what we all owe each other right and, and net it out to zero and if it's you know if i owe you ten and you owe someone else six and they owe me four you know we can clear four of all of them and so these loops these closed cyclic loops of obligations exist all throughout the economy um and but no one's looking for them right and 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 uh, and, and they might be difficult to find because you have to collect, a, uh, you know, you have to collect real invoices from real businesses. And, and you know, there's, there's there's challenges associated with that. But if you find them, you can actually provide a significant liquidity savings um, to individual businesses, right? And effectively allowing them to pay off their accounts payable with their account with their accounts receivable, right? And everyone's invoices just are, are, are you know, they just go down essentially by um, by some amount. So this is this amazing power that comes by just looking at the payments graph, but then it gets even better because once you have the structure of the payments graph, now you can actually do liquidity injections into the graph as a whole and optimize uh, for sort of network level property so that li liquidity you inject has sort of a maximal impact on the network on clearing as much debt as possible um, within the network. And so this is a, a you know much more sort of precision um, targeted way to actually bring liquidity into an economy in a way that benefits the real you know network of trade obligations and, and, and payment obligations that exist to the benefit of those of those small um, of those small businesses. And so you know our, our team is working on this at, at, at informal systems. Uh, you know they've done they they've published papers on this on uh, there's there's an amazing paper called um, Oblig or uh, liquidity saving through obligation clearing, where they so they sort of go into this and you know they look at this system that's been running in Slovenia, where you know the government of Slovenia lets all the businesses in the country just submit all their invoices to them, and they find all the cycles and then just give everyone back their invoices with a lower amount, and it's just like magically debt is just like cleared because there's actual structure in the payments graph, right? And you have to actually look at that structure and not just pretend that you know every dollar is a dollar and. Uh, and it's all just, you know, about the quantity of money in the economy. You just need to inject liquidity, like without even looking at where it's going and, and just look at the, the overall number. It's really about the structure, the patterns in the payment graph uh, that really matter. And, and those closed loops, I mean, that's what sustainable economies are, are, are made of, right? You want you want to talk about sustainability. It's built out of these closed loops of flow, right? And, 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 so, and so if you want to do economics sustainably and you want to do, you know, payments and finance sustainably, you have to look at the graph. If you're not looking at the graph, you can't even possibly, you know, uh, kind of do this. 
Um, and, and then you have to find those loops, clear those loops and promote their promote the growth of those loops. Right. The, the more loops, the sort of more more sustainable, arguably. Um, and, and and so that's that's sort of a key, uh, you know, that, that's key. And that's really what what collaborative um, what collaborative finance is all, all about, tuning to the payments graph. Um, you know, clearing the cycles, encouraging their growth and injecting liquidity in a way that's aware of the overall structure and is sort of, you know, optimizes um, for, uh, you know, for maximum positive externalities, you could say. Right. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I can really feel that your, your kind of energy and passion like bubbling up when, when you start talking yeah. about it. Uh, and and it, it really fits into the whole vibes of Cosmos, that, like I mentioned just now, around like localized, sovereign. Uh, but still interoperable in the way that like you can net out like these interactions between individuals, communities, right? As small like uh, yeah, corporations and so on. Uh, and if, if I may also kind of like try to draw this history here, it almost feels like this is like the V3 of uh, of like social finance, right? Because uh, initially or peer-to-peer -peer finance, because initially we had this whole barter system like right before money was invented and we all like find figured out our obligations, social obligations, and then we invented money. And that became like the whole unit account, you know, of exchange, and we could do that efficiently. Uh, but then there wasn't this like overall view. Now that everything is digitized, we can kind of have both the best of both worlds of like a peer to peer partner system, uh, which comes with like some sort of social reputation and uh, sustainability uh, with the whole like the benefits of like the transparency and like the easy accounting of money. And then now we can net it out as a whole. And, mm -hmm. and, and it, actually, we've already seen that happen with uh, some of the modern systems, right? So banks today do do like interbank settlement like, as as oh. well, like end of the day, like because you do all these micro loans uh, yeah. during the day, and then at the end you just like settle. So why can't we also do that, right? Uh, within some of these uh, Peter Pan systems, exactly. because I mean. Yeah. The greatest trick the devil ever played was convincing us that clearing is just for financial institutions, right? I mean, like you're saying, the banks saved themselves like trillions of dollars in liquidity by doing clearing between themselves. Um, and businesses could do clearing between themselves, too. And they could also save themselves, you know, uh, at a global scale, trillions of dollars of, uh, of, of liquidity. And that's liquidity that they don't have to reach into their pockets for. They don't have to stress out about. They don't have to get loans from banks for, right? Um, that's, that, that's real, you know, emotional savings. Uh, liquidity savings and pain savings for for real people so um yeah that's it that's that's exactly right yeah all right and you know, i should I, I'm, I'm sorry I, I just have to call it out because uh you know uh <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm trying to understand the origin of money and this whole you know oh we started this whole story of like oh we started with barter and markets of barter and then money was invented to you know um to to, to make it convenient that's being seriously called into question and oh, okay um, you know, from 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 what we know, there was never really a world like that where we had these like you know barter markets, right? And then oh, and then money was invented. Um, that's not to say nobody ever bartered. I mean, we wouldn't really be able to disprove that. And it seems kind of obvious that you know somewhere along the line, some human being you know is gonna is gonna barter something with others. But that there were sort of markets of this um, is is a little bit more more questionable. And, and money is uh, money is sort of very old and it has taken different forms and has been you know deeply intertwined with sort of um, you know marriage and dowries and and sort of managing kind of the logic of kinship and you know evolving evolving families. But but of course you know the emergence of states. Uh, are intimately seem to be intimately bound up with with the kind of money um, monies that we know these these units of account and and their sort of standardization and you know and then and then ultimately their their use for clearing but you know there was there was a time for instance you know talking about the 16th century where um, you know the merchant bankers of the time I mean they would get together and they would just clear they they would meet at these fairs and they would just clear massive amounts of trade by netting off their books right um, and that was uh, that was very very powerful stuff and. Uh, and, and they were clearing like, you know, actual trade and, 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 and facilitating that. Um, and, and things changed kind of quite dramatically, you know, arguably with the discovery, of, you know, by the Spanish of silver in, in, in the new world and this kind of flood of liquidity uh, into Europe kind of broke the old uh, merchant banker system of the bills of exchange. And of course, usury was illegal at the time. And, and then that started, you know, interest bearing loans and that started to change. And then we've been on, you know, a few hundred years, a uh, experiment of like infinite liquidity growth and, you uh, you know, uh, uh, high interest loans that are just like perennially uh, 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 rolled over, um, you know, maybe that experiment's coming to an end, you know, maybe it's time to make interest illegal again. <laughs> That's a crazy thing to say, but I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There's it's, it's certainly some people in your audience that are going to think I'm crazy to suggest, you know, anything, <laughs> anything of the sort, you know, what kind of, what kind of commie fool is this? But um, no, no. Uh, yeah, so so you know, money has a complicated history, and we're trying to understand it. And and arguably, the the last few hundred years have been like you know a very strange experiment. And and um, 
you know, and, and it's time for something to change. And I think crypto is kind of scratching at the revolution, right? It's like, hey, something needs to change here. Like we know something needs to change. And and, and I think most, uh, you know, most in crypto don't really know what, what it is that, that needs to change. And, you know, they're building something and, and, and a lot of them, what they're building is, is important. Um, but, you know, we, we need to understand, I think, a lot more about uh, how the current system works and, and the history of system and, and the kinds of possible systems we could build, the future we, we, we could build toward. And, you know, that, that's part of the, uh, you know, the project we're, we're undertaking, especially with, with collaborative finances, to really understand that. And, you know, and sometimes to go back to the basics of money and, you know, look at the different functions of money and try to understand what they're, what they're all about. You know, I actually started um, mm. uh, starting a blog post series about this where I'm looking at the, the properties of money and the tensions between them and, you know, trying to explore um, how mm. that all works. And um, yeah, so anyway, so for more about Kofi, you can check out Kofi.informal.systems that, you know, C-O-F-I, Kofi.informal.systems. And we've got just a very basic uh, bare, bone, bare bones page there with some of our, um, some of our uh, research papers and, and and you know various blog posts and stuff, but there'll, there'll be a lot more coming out about it about it next year. We're working on some prototypes and stuff, so uh, yeah, excited times. Awesome, thank thank you so much for calling it out, right? Because uh, it is a very complicated topic, and I'm sure I'm oversimplifying it. Yeah, yeah, no uh, problem. Yeah, and and I love that it's it's almost like a Trojan horse, right? Like you, so the simple case is like, hey, netting out invoices, but it's a Trojan horse for, you know, reinventing peer-to-peer -peer finance, <laughs> much like how, yeah. you know, like, hey, you know, here's this like Ponzi token, uh, like token, but actually, you know, it's a, it's a Trojan for like self-sovereign kind of like assets and ownership. Yeah. Uh, and so I think a, a lot of Web3 and crypto is kind of like that, right? <laughs> like yeah, this impression right, is yeah. very different from the rabbit hole. All right, bring it back then. Uh, right, we've talked a lot about like collaborative finance, you know, history of money, uh, and how that actually is is like contextual for Web three. Um, how does it actually relate, perhaps like more uh, currently in how we can conceptualize the the Cosmos ecosystem, right, crypto as a whole? Because actually, when when you talk about the kind of netting out, immediately I'm like, actually, that's how the kind of bridging solutions could be improved, right? Everybody's very concerned about security, like, oh, I have to move assets here, and then like, it might get hacked because I have to keep liquidity and so on. And what Kofi does is reduce the amount of liquidity that's required. And all you need to do is actually send these like cross chain messages saying like, hey, are you I owe you this much, you owe him this much. And then between even the chains, uh, we could minimize the amount of assets that are moving between and just send these messages and then collectively kind of like net off a lot of the interactions. Um, I, I do wonder, yeah, is it applicable? Can we do that? Possibly. I mean, we're, we're, we're exploring those kinds of ideas, how we can use the sort of Ko-Fi tools and, and, and techniques and mechanisms in, in the interchain and, and over IBC and um, there are there are some ideas for how to do that. So we're, we're we're conducting some analyses now of the cycles that might exist, you know, in IBC and uh, you know within within different chains and um and 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 what that might um what that might imply. But it does require, you know, it, I mean, it, it it does involve um uh credit basically and trust and, and and more more sort of trusted relations, right? And so that that's a, a little bit of a different a different model. People are used to there being, you know, these these assets that they that they move around and that, you know, that do get locked up and and, and stuff like that. So um I, I think it's worth exploring for sure. Um and and so we're starting to do some of that that analysis and, and we're definitely thinking in that in that direction of, of of potential for protocol design. But um yeah, we're not not sure exactly how that how that should work yet, or, or or how it might be applied. And so, you know, we're also thinking as well about the real world and just working with these using the Cosmos technology to build out, uh, you know, to build out blockchains that that can that you can basically upload the payments graph to, and that you can mm -hmm. do the the clearing on and the liquidity injection and 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 so on. Um, so there's both, mm -hmm. yeah. So we're you know building out the applications, but also doing some research to see if it's applicable at the infrastructure level as well, you know, at, for IBC and, and and things like that. So um, yeah, it's definitely an interesting topic. Mm, yeah, for sure. Both in parallel, the real world applications and seeing like the more Web3 native uh, applications yeah. here. Exactly, yeah, so, yeah, certainly it's, it's a, a big paradigm shift, right? Where we want things mm -hmm. to be immutable versus some form of like credit. Um, I guess it, it could uh, have the early signs of working out if we do have like more shared security stuff, for example, with mm -hmm. like uh, interchange security, mesh security. And, you know, if your validators are the same validators, you can kind of like almost guarantee some form of credit facility there. Uh, or, or at a worst case scenario, um, yeah, uh, be able to do do something to the chain, um, mm. yeah. yeah. But it, we're, we're very early. I mean, even even those models have not been built yet. So, yeah, it's uh, early. I mean, it's it's definitely it's definitely starting now. You know, and that that's one of the really cool things about IBC, right? Is that it's 
because it's a base level general purpose communication standard for arbitrary state machines, essentially, I mean, they don't have to be on blockchains. Like, mm. we like to say, you know, on the internet of blockchains, nobody knows you're a fridge, right? Like you could be, you could be any computer. Um, you can, you don't actually have to be a blockchain to speak IBC, little known, little known fact. Um, but, uh, but that opens up a lot of really cool opportunities for integration with, you know, with, 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 with existing, existing systems. But the point being, because the general purpose protocol, we can build new kinds of ways to share security across mm. it, right? And so people are now experimenting with, you know, multiple different approaches to doing this. You know, you mentioned a few, you've got, uh, you've got uh, mesh security, you've got, you know, what we call interchain security, um, you've got, um, you, you've got ways to do, you know, what, what might be called a heterogeneous tendermint, where, where you take advantage of shared validator sets to mm. do like atomic commits across multiple chains at, at, at a time, um, things like that. So, so, so people are really starting to explore different ways to actually uh, share security over the interchain and get essentially stronger guarantees, right? We talk about, oh, these are sovereign, completely independent, sovereign chains. Okay, they're interoperable over IBC, but now they can actually explore having, you know, greater kind of political alignment or economic alignment by building more advanced protocols on top of on top of IBC that, you know, that, that essentially allow them to synchronize in, in more advanced ways, right? Um, so, so that's really, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's really interesting to see. And, you know, with interchain security, the one, you know, what we're building for the Cosmos hub, it's very, it's just like the, the, the simplest way to, to do this of allowing one blockchain to inherit its validator set from another over IBC, right? So that's the thing that moves over IBC. I mean, it, you know, there's a little more information than just validators. You have to, you have to send like slashing information and, and fees and, and, and stuff like that. But essentially one validator can, one blockchain can inherit its validator set from another, but you can imagine, you know, more advanced ways to do that and, and, and you know, more sophisticated ways. And, you know, mesh security does another kind of thing where, you know, delegators, you know, on one chain can, can sort of have their validate validators that are on, that are on multiple chains and can sort of stake on, on multiple chains. And so that way you can sort of, you know, share more, you know, build this sort of more uh, mesh of security across multiple different chains based on the validator um, overlap. And so, you know, things that are going to be more aware of the structure of the validator set and the sort of emergent topology, you know, of, of the network will be able to build, you know, more interesting protocols. And then the holy grail of that I think ultimately is building Tendermint over IBC, right? You treat Tendermint as if it's, you know, just a general, pur or sorry, you treat IBC as a general purpose, um, you know, transport protocol. Uh, you can build any distributed system. And so why not build a consensus protocol itself over IBC where the actual nodes in the consensus are blockchains? Um, so that's, you know, once, once we build Tendermint over IBC, I think then the, the project is complete. Um, and then maybe I can take up farming or something, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Net, net off your, uh, your obligations by sending people your produce. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Uh, yeah, th that's such an insane vision uh, of like, you know, Tendermint over IBC. And wow, it, it really kind of, and you alluded to this before as well, when you yeah. said that actually other chains can become their nodes of like the hub and, and part of the yeah. interchain. And so I'd love to wrap up this episode as we're like pretty much over an hour now uh, with like, how do you see the, the future of interchain evolving, right? So beyond mm -hmm. Cosmos, like the, the whole like multi-chain universe uh, of the Cosmos, yeah. uh, beyond Cosmos, uh, right? Yeah. Where, you know, IBC is being run on these other chains, right? We have like sh a mutual security kind of mechanisms, like collaborative finance between chains. Uh, how will all these other chains play out? Do you think? Yeah, it's it's going to be really interesting. I mean, um, yeah, I don't really do theses the way uh, you know people ask about you know what's what's your thesis on 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 something, and you know that's kind of like an investment investment term. It's like oh, this is how the world's going to play out, and so this is the bet. You know, this is where I'm going to invest money to sort of get the payoff. I'm much more of a you know let's build the future that 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 we want to see. Um, and, and so, you know, so, so, so the, the kind of future ultimately that, that I think we're building towards requires us to integrate more directly with, with the real world. And I think to have the security structure of the blockchains actually represent the political economic structure of our societies, right. And to not just be these like, you know, um, abstract, purely digital, uh, you know, kind of, kind of separated things, but, but to be grounded more in, in more real world communities as as well and so mm. you know in over, over the next few years i mean i do th i think we have a, we have a while to get there that's sort of getting there is maybe getting into that illumination phase i was, I was sort of hinting at mm. um i think in the interim we're gonna see i think ibc is one i don't know if there's if it's uh, if there's any any real competitors as of as far as um general purpose in, you know interoperability protocols and, and we are starting to see other other projects sort of you know traditionally you might say outside cosmos um start adopting 
um, IBC. You know, we're seeing integrations with Polkadot. We're seeing integrations with Near. People are talking about integrating IBC into Ethereum. I mean, that's the you know that that'll be the dream. Um, and so, and you know, we've got folks. Uh, we, we obviously the IBC ecosystem within Cosmos is growing. We've got like fifty or you know fifty or more chains now that, that are live, and we're seeing new chains building. You know, they're not building with the Cosmos SDK, but they're building on Tendermint and they're using IBC and yeah, you know, and and, and those are coming online. So. Um, so I think we will see a pretty significant adoption um, of IBC and and a lot of experimentation with with shared security protocols. And I don't know exactly how to predict that. I think we'll see you know variations on the interchain security on on mesh security. Um, you know we're, we'll probably see a lot of overlap in in the validator sets. And I think the cross domain MEV is kind of gonna have a role to play in how all of this works. And you know it's a little bit scary trying to think about the you know what the centralization uh, vectors are, are are gonna be in all of that. But again, all of these systems are still so far removed from like the real worlds of, of commerce and they're still kind of stuck in this like abstract finance thing. And and, mm -hmm. and in some sense, that's the whole purpose of the you know project of cryptocurrencies is to move away from abstract speculative finance. And, and I think we forget that. I mean, almost every day that, that we look at a chart or watch an exchange blow up or you know talk about the price or, or, or whatever. Um, but to really get there, I think we do need integration with, with the political economic uh, you know institutions and, and to connect ultimately with their security structure, right? Um, and with, and, and I think what that is going to mean is with the the, the coming sovereignty of the city. Um, you know, cities are, 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 are chronically underrepresented in the constitutional structure of mm -hmm. their of their polities. Um, you know, sovereignty lives at the level of the nation state and, and you have, you know, provinces or states or, or you know, what, you know, regions, what, whatever it might be that are sort of represented in, in constitutions and, and cities are just like, you know, creatures of their province, I'm in Canada, so, you know, creatures of their province or, or, or whatever, they're just like corporations owned by the, owned by the province um, and, and they don't really have the level of sovereignty that they actually deserve given their, their role in global commerce and, you know, housing population and, and, and so on. And so, you know, I think at some level, um, you know, we're on the precipice of a kind of constitutional reform uh, that that will see increasing recognition of, of the sovereignty of cities, and 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 I believe, or at least you know, partially building towards um, that blockchains being the the technological platform in which that constitutional reform plays out, that enables you know cities to achieve this kind of level of political economic expression that and and, and sovereignty that has until now been uh, uh, kind of denied from them, and that, and that we're trying to do is is to put together a more sort of polycentric construction of 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 you know um, global politics essentially that that better bridges the gap from local to global and back, and the structure of money is 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 a big part of that, and you know the sort of security architecture of of the whole thing. Um, is uh is going to be a part of that and, and i don't think we know exactly what that looks like i think i think ko-fi might actually help us figure it out a little bit better because it, it'll it actually start mapping the structure of the payments graph and that'll tell us something about political economic construction and then we ultimately need to ground that in like bioregional reality you know and then there's there's a whole refi movement you know as you meant you know you've got DeFi, you've also got refi and they're trying to do you know a very uh, amicable thing as well like grounding stuff in, in you know real world uh, uh you know natural biological assets and respecting the earth and um, you know, trying to figure out how to, how to represent the earth as, as a major player within, you know, within the financial system. I mean, it's crazy that the way we treat the earth, we treat it as like assets that we can just like, you know, pull out our income that we just pull out of the ground as if there's no liabilities associated with it. It's a, or as if we're not, you know, taking someone else's assets is a little bit nuts, but that's a, that's a tangent for another day. Um, but um I'm sorry, I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, Kofi will help us yeah. map out the payment graph, and that that might actually give us a better sense of like the actual structure of how this thing is all supposed to all supposed to fit together, and the sort of you know multi scalar nature of it, and you know the fractal hierarchy of of it all. So um, you know, I think there's there's still a lot to work out and, and, and figure out in that. But I think I think that will, and I think oh, the, I mean the other interesting thing that that you know that's happening in the world is Twitter is collapsing, right? I mean it's happening before our eyes. I don't know. I don't know how he's going to pull himself out of this one. Um, you know, it's a it's a little bit it's a little bit scary, um, but it's not it's not looking too hot. So I don't know what's going to happen there. But you know, people are people are it, it's 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 frustrating that we don't have an alternative that we don't have a solution. And, you know, people are struggling to go to Mastodon and and, and kind of all this stuff. And um, and you know, I really think that that. Um, the architecture of social media from an infrastructure perspective should also be, uh, you know, more, um, you know, really more geographically organized, right? And that, and that, you know, in some sense, you know, social media should be provided as, as and, and even the internet, the architecture of the internet should be provided in a more, as a more public good kind of from these municipalities, right? They should organize more uh, kind of city first internets that all kind of stitch themselves together. And we already have, you know, we already have all this caching 
um, that happens that happens locally, right? You've got you know mm -hmm. these, these content distribution networks all over the world that are like sticking all this data in local jurisdictions because like just architecturally, like delivering bits to a physical location is still expensive. You still have to get the bits across space time. I mean, space time is real. We sometimes forget that because we spend all our freaking time on the internet but like we're, we're we're real biophysical beings right like the, mm. the physical structure and geography of everything actually matters and 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 you know sending all your bits to california is like it i mean it's like sending all your sewage to california like you're not going to send all your sewage to get processed in california you're going to process it locally like okay bits are smaller and cheaper than you know than sewage but you know it's kind of the same thing you don't need to send all your crap to california to get it washed by their servers before sending it back with you know mixing it with whatever so so i think we need to take that seriously as um you know that that, that the architecture should be more also like reflective of the real political economic environment and that and that there are scalability benefits that will come from that and it's going to be a little bit awkward and weird to figure out the ux and, and how to stitch these things together and how you broach across you know obviously you, i don't want to dismiss the reality of like you know, global internet communities. I mean, these are amazing things that have enabled us to come together and, and, and share and in and, and, and different ways. But, you know, if we lose our connection to the real physical structure of, of, of the world and, and the sort of natural environment that feeds us, um, you know, then it'll just be the matrix and we'll all just be living in tubes and, you know, and, and I mean, maybe some people want that, but, you know, that's not, that's not what I want. So anyway, that was a, uh... <laughs> you know, I'm, pretty pretty weird, so I'm kind of unfiltered <laughs> and just like, <laughs> my mind, but um, I, yeah. I feel that like you've rambled like ten topics that that you know we could spend another like few episodes or, or a whole yeah, series yeah. discussing. Uh, so so thank you so much again, Ethan. I th I think if I if I may kind of like get, capture the gist of the the spirit that you're trying to convey, um, I really sense from you like a, a push towards like localized sovereign communities and yeah. empowering them with the tools to then express those like political uh, kind of like uh, organizations that like for that come from a bottom up through blockchains and through like uh things like ibc and and what we have with the cosmos sdk so yeah. I, I do think that that really kind of like ties in with the cosmos vision uh beautifully thank you so much again yeah. Ethan. yeah thanks for having me this was great all right i uh, won't keep you from bed any longer i know it's getting late uh for everyone i hope you really enjoyed this and found it insightful and both uh inspirational as well uh both from like a knowledge perspective uh, and I think like from a Web3 perspective. So thank you again for tuning in and we'll see you next time.